Hi right, guys, today I'll show you how the second derivative test can fail when using it to determine whether a critical point is a local max, min, or neither. I recently saw my students use the second derivative test in high school calculus and of course they run into trouble. So in today's video, I'll give an example when the second derivative test breaks down and I'll show you what to do instead if you want to determine the nature of a critical point. Recall that a critical point is a point on the function where the tangent slope is flat, or in other words, the first derivative solved at these critical points are exactly zero. And when the first derivative is zero, one of the three cases must occur. Either this point is a max or a min or neither. If you're using the second derivative test, you need to first calculate the first and the second derivatives and find the critical points x equal to k, then see how the second derivative behaves at those critical points x equal to k. If the second derivative at the critical point is greater than zero, then that means the concavity opens up, so this critical point is a local min. And if the second derivative is less than zero, that means this critical point is a local max. And if the second derivative is zero or undefined, then this critical point is neither. And of course, there are cases where the second derivative test can work. Take, for example, fx is equal to x squared. You can calculate the first and second derivatives, find the critical point, which is x equal to zero. Then you see that the second derivative is always 2, which is greater than 0. So you know that this critical point, x equal to 0, concaves up. So it is a local min. And if you look at the graph, yes, this makes sense. But what if you take another function, say x to the power of 4? And if you repeat the same process, you will see that at critical point x equal to 0, the second derivative is also 0. But can you conclude that it is neither? Well, if you look at the graph, this blue line, you see it is clearly a local min. So what is the right way to identify whether a critical point is a max or min? We'll use the sign analysis of the first derivative. And here's how it works. Calculate the first derivative, use that to determine the critical point, And we'll see how the first derivative behaves around the critical point. We know that at the critical point, the first derivative is exactly zero. So we'll see how the first derivative changes as you move slightly left of the critical point. Say x takes on a slightly negative value, say negative one, let's see how the first derivative behaves. We see that the first derivative at x equal to negative one is actually negative. So we'll put a negative sign left of the critical point. And we'll see how the first derivative behaves right of the critical point. Say x is equal to say positive one. Now see that the first derivative as a result will be positive. So we have a negative first and then positive. And as you can imagine, this is a local min. And of course, this agrees with the graph. So let's summarize sign analysis. Find the critical points and see how the first derivative behaves around the critical point. If to the left it is negative and to the right it is positive, that means it goes down and goes up. So this is a local min. If the left is positive and the right is negative, that means it goes up and then down. This is a local max. And if it's the same sign on both sides, then you know it is neither. That is the end of sign analysis.